podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24 7. She just goes a little mad sometimes. Do you ever feel like you're normal and the rest of the world has lost its collective mind? Put your helmet on, we'll be reaching speeds of three. Do you find people saying this to you a lot? Are you totally deranged? Are you looking for a looking glass to pass through? I find your lack of faith disturbing. Or looking for a rabbit hole to fall down? Who could think of a better punishment, really? Everything's the same here, it's just a little worse. Guess what? Life's a bitch. Now so am I. You found it. <laughs> Welcome to Platinum Rose's Garden. Hello, my darlings. This is Platinum Rose Lady welcoming you to Platinum Rose's Garden on uh, Sunday, January 29th, 2017. I'm sorry to be a little late. Um, mitigating circumstances and all that so uh here we are back from uh the helatus it's my first show back it's my first show of 2017 oh my gosh that's just crazy um i hope <clears throat> everybody had a great holiday um you know christmas and new years and all that and hanukkah and kwanzaa and all that too if you celebrate or whatever you celebrate um i would like to be like, oh, everything was wonderful and perfect and fantastic. But it wasn't. Um, I got sick. I got really sick. <coughs> Excuse me. As you may be able to tell, I'm still dealing with it. I had a super major bitch of a cold that I could not get rid of that still won't go away. Um, and that sucks, you know, because, you know, it's Christmas and it's the holidays and it's New Year's and all that. And you want to, you know, celebrate and eat all the stuff you shouldn't eat. And there's really no point to eating that stuff if you can't taste it. That sucks, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, any any year you can walk away from is a good year, right? You know, all things considered, considering 2016 kind of sucked. You know, when it came to losing people and saying goodbye to people. And then there's the whole presidential thing, which I'm not getting into because I'm just not. Because I'm sick of it and I don't want to talk about it any fucking more. Um, so let's talk about something fun. Uh, obviously, something fun up here in, in the part of the country I live in, which is the great and glorious state of Massachusetts in the wonderful part of the country known as New England. Um, everybody is all terribly excited about this whole football thing next week. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know. It's the Super Bowl and the Patriots are in it again, and it's terribly exciting. Um, you know, and everybody's like all getting hyped and stuff with that. I bet by the end of next week, by, by, by Super Bowl Sunday, it's going to be unbearable up here. Especially for those of us who really don't know anything about football. You totally can't see me, but I'm totally raising my hand. I, I don't get it. You know, and the sad thing is people have tried to explain football to me. And I like to think that I'm a relatively smart person. I just don't get it. You know, I mean, they've tried and I've just been like, nope, you <laughs> know, sorry. The, the only other time I've been that bad was I went to a con with my friends. Uh, this is a long time ago. And I got separated from them. So I'm just wandering around looking at all the stuff and stuff like that. And I, and somebody calls me over to their booth and I'm like, okay. So I go over, you know, because I'm, like that and this this kid well young person at the table was very nice and polite and he's like hey have you ever played magic the gathering and i'm like nope have you heard of it yep do you know how to play nope would you like to hear about it okay so i sit down and this kid starts explaining the rules of the card game magic the gathering to me and this is me uh-huh 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 really uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm just nodding. And in my head, I'm going, what the fuck 
are you saying? You know, I'm like, this might as well be in Latin. I mean, if it was in Latin, I might have understood it better from all the exorcisms on Supernatural. But no, I'm just, and I'm, and I'm like, I can't tell this poor kid to go back to the, all the way to the beginning. I just can't. I'll feel like a jerk. So I was like, oh, you know, great. Thanks for telling me. I'll look into it. Bye bye now. And I'm walking away and my friends and, and my guy found me finally. And my, my guy's like, you look kind of dazed. I'm like, I gotta go sit down. <laughs> I'm like, I have a bunch of stuff in my head right now that doesn't make any sense please help me <laughs> I'm, you know that's the sad thing I played D&D for years and I and well I guess I kind of got D&D because we kind of made up our own rules as we went along kind of sort of um obviously okay let's changing gears um obviously there's supernatural to talk about which is always a wonderful thing to talk about um, the Supernatural Con in Houston was this weekend. It's still going on probably right now. Time difference and all that. And I hope everybody at the con is having a great time. Um, and of course, there's the excellent news that we have to talk about that happened um, a little earlier. Well, at the end of 2016. And it's very exciting. Wonderful news in the fact that uh, Jensen Ackles and his beautiful wife, Daniil, have added to their family um, that uh, Daniil gave birth to their twins on December 2nd of 2016. And Jensen now has a son named Zeppelin Bram and a little girl named Arrow Rhodes, along with their other daughter, uh, JJ, uh, Justice J, who was born in 2013. And that's obviously very awesome news in the end. Jensen has been kind enough to share pictures of himself and his family. And the babies are just absolutely adorable. And JJ looks so very happy to be a big sister. Um, speaking from experience as a big sister, it is a wonderful thing to be a big sister on occasion. There are occasions when you do want to, you know, throw your younger sibling out a window. That might just be me. You know, <laughs> that might be me and my relationship with my sister. Um, we we did not get along. We're very different people. Now that we're older and allegedly more mature, um, we get along much better. I respect her a lot. She's a great lady. She's a mom multiple times over, and I really respect her for that. And we also got some wonderful news from uh, Jared Padalecki. He uh, was on um, Live with Regis and Kelly. And well, it's actually just live now with Kelly and whomever is hosting this week. And he mentioned that he was a father of two, soon to be three in March. So uh, Jared's beautiful wife, uh, Genevieve, is pregnant and they know that they are having a little girl. And I just think that is so awesome and sweet and wonderful. And that poor girl is never going to date ever. I mean, think about it. She's going to have two older brothers and a father who's six foot four. That child, when she becomes a teenager, is never going to date. Ever. You know, that's just, you know, poor kid. But she's going to have some really great brothers and a great dad and a great mom. And I hope that, I hope that Genevieve is doing well. You know, being, being pregnant looks like it's a lot of, work um <laughs> says the person who has no children but the end product is obviously a wonderful thing because you've got a baby so that's really exciting so hopefully she's getting lots of rest and and taking care of herself as, as i'm sure that she is um as we have some uh casting supernatural news which is always a great thing um misha collins is going to be appearing on eric kripke's newest show timeless the uh, time travel time travel which is very hard to say um time travel drama on nbc um misha will be appearing as elliot ness in uh, episode 15 of timeless which is really cool and kind of ironic since dean wound up working with elliot ness in the episode of supernatural time after time from season seven um jim beaver is also appearing on timeless he is going to be p appearing as an nsa agent in the uh, last three episodes of of the season so I think that's really exciting and awesome news. Congratulations to everybody for, you know, for their, you know, extensions of their family and new acting gigs and stuff like that. And this is coming from me from straight from my heart. 
I am wishing the cast of Supernatural and, you know, anyone that's involved, you know, a wonderful 2017. I hope that your new year will be prosperous and full of love and and good times. And speaking of Supernatural, let's get to this week's episode recap. Season 12, Episode 9 of Supernatural, First Blood. And I would also like to bring up another bit of great news. This episode is episode number 250 in Supernatural's run. So that's an amazing thing right there. Uh, We are dealing with the road so far at the beginning of the episode. And as we are seeing what happened so far this year, the introduction of the the formal introduction into the universe of the British men of letters and Lady Tony, bitch, um, and the other members of the men of letters we've seen, um, the charming but deceptive Mick and the extremely dangerous Mr. Ketch, and everything else that has gone on this season as we're reviewing as the song from ACDC, If You Want Blood, You Got It, is playing in the background. And we see everything that happened this season with Lucifer coming back to Earth, him eventually taking over the body of rock star Vince Vincente, moving on from Vince's body after it falls apart, and him taking on the body of the President of the United States and having a sexual relationship with a young White House worker and getting her pregnant. So now there is a Nephilim growing in a woman who is currently on the run, And Sam and Dean wind up exercising the devil from the president, but in, but they are soon caught afterwards by government agents who assume incorrectly that they are trying to assassinate the president. The president who actually survives being possessed by Lucifer, but has no memory of the, of what happened to him. The end of, of episode eight saw Sam and Dean being put into a, armored car kind of of uh, device and being sent you know who knows where and now we are at now and we find mary in a diner it turns out it's a specific diner in lawrence kansas um mulroney's diner which is the diner where she and john winchester went on their first date uh, Mary, as she's sitting there, gets a call from Castiel, uh, telling, you know, telling, she's well, obviously telling them what, you know, telling her what's happened to Sam and Dean, and also about this, this woman who is now pregnant with the devil's child. Um, we see Agent Rick Sanchez, who is that rapidly becoming one of my least favorite people, telling the warden of the prison, which, where Sam and Dean have been taken, Um, about the Winchesters and what they're accused of. We see Kelly, the young woman that was sleeping with, as she thought, sleeping with the president when it was actually Lucifer, who is now currently knocked up with Lucifer's child. Kelly is on the run. And the president, who has, who's, has told his aides that the last thing he remembered was praying in his, ho- in his hotel room. You know, he doesn't remember saying yes to Lucifer. He doesn't remember any of that stuff. So he's obviously not going to be much help. Um, we see Sam and Dean being put in separate cells in this prison that is obviously one of these prisons that isn't supposed to exist. And, um, we, w- Agent Sanchez is talking with the the warden, who I believe is the he's referred to as Agent Camp, and he tells he tells this um, warden, for lack of a better term, that he, basically Agent Sanchez is of the opinion they should just kill Sam and Dean, since where they are, Sam and Dean are like off the radar; they're they're nowhere as far as anyone's concerned, and they feel like they can that this this piece of shit Sanchez feels like he can just kill them with no repercussions. But the warden says, no, he has another plan. Uh, we see him talking to Dean and we see him talking to Sam. They do, they, I like the editing, the way they did the editing on this episode where they cut in between. He's, you can tell he's giving the same speech to both Dean and Sam, who are each sitting on their cots dressed in the prison jumpsuits and they're 
they're not responding. They they had they haven't said a word. They're not saying anything. Um, and the warden tells them that you know he's seen people tortured. He's seen people waterboarded. He's seen people cut, and you know that that gets information but it's usually not the information that they need because this guy is convinced the warden is convinced that possibly Sam and Dean are actually they might be working with another terrorist cell you know that they might be just part of a bigger plan and the the warden keep he tells both the brothers separately that he's not going to torture them they're not going to be injured in any way that what he plans for them is that they are going to be left alone. That that is, you know, that's what he plans to do to them, is to leave them alone in these little cells until they talk, until they break. Now, I realize that some people might be like, so what? You know, big deal. Um, solitary confinement is... Not what you think it is. Solitary confinement is not just you sitting there and staring at four walls. Because trust me, that will make you nuts after a while. I mean, when you think about the fact that these guys who are in supermax prisons and stuff like that, they are in a cell for 23 hours a day. They are allowed one hour where they can, they're can. they led into another room, with which is like in an outside kind of area. It's still got, you know, bars and you know, chain link, you know, chain link fences and shit, they can't get out. Um, but they're still, they can get out and walk around and then they're put back in their cells. Sam and Dean aren't even being, being given that luxury and they are left utterly alone. Um, we see Mick from the, uh, the men of letters, Mick Davies at a, at a, uh, a hotel, like some kind of a motel. And he's at a typewriter, uh, which, after he starts typing on it a little bit, you know, types in a few things, it starts typing by itself, like, you know, like an old, like a player piano used to do, for those of you who remember those things. Um, he explains that he's been trying to make headway in America, trying to get American hunters to join up with the British men of letters. And it's not going well. If... The meeting that uh, Mick has with a hunter named Wally is any indication of how things are going. It's going badly. Um, at, Mary meets up with Cass at the bunker, and at first she's really pissed at Cass, um, but she also blames herself, and she asks Cass why... If, if Sam and Dean needed help, why didn't they seek her out? Castiel's response is, you were out. You know, and that's true. You know, she left. We, we cut back to the, uh, the government facility, and um, Dean manages to unscrew a, a small screw off of his bed, and he starts marking the wall like marking the number of days they are in this place on the wall. And we see from his markings and what they're going through that the days are starting to turn into weeks. Now think about this. Weeks where you're in a room all by yourself. You can't talk to anybody. Nobody's talking to you. The only... The only um, contact you have with the rest of the world is when someone passes you food through a slot in the door. Still think solitary confinement would be a cakewalk? Castiel winds up meeting up with Crowley trying to get his help in um, in finding out where Sam and Dean are first in order to, you know, in order to get them out. Uh, Crowley says that he can't help Cass that he does have spies in you know in all kinds of law enforcement and government and his spies can't find out anything that where, wherever Sam and Dean are it's above the usual law enforcement government kind of stuff that 
that Crowley can have his fingers in and find out information. He also tells Cass that he's not really worried about the Winchesters because no matter what they deal with, no matter who's trying to kill them, human, angel, demon, whoever, you know, the Winchesters always come back and they always seem to tend to kill the people that have been trying to fuck with them. And he tells Cass that he feels sorry for whoever does have Sam and Dean. Um, we, we cut back to the Batcave. Uh, Mary is in the kitchen of the Batcave and she is looking in uh, John's journal and she hears a phone ringing and she goes in, she follows the sound of the ringing and finds out that it's a phone in Dean's room. It turns out that it's a phone call from um, Alicia, who we met in in the episode celebrating the life of Asa Fox. Alicia is um, Asa's daughter. Um, she says that uh, that she's dealing. Her and her brother are dealing with a werewolf pack, and she Mary, even though she's worried about her own children, she asks Alicia where where she's located. Um, we, we cut back to her dealing, we, we cut back to, the, to the prison and we see Sam and Dean dealing with it as best as they can deal with it. We see Sam working out. We see Dean still scratching the marks in the wall, but you can tell this is wearing on both of them. And when you think about the idea that this is breaking both of them, this is breaking two people who have been, both been to hell, both been tortured, one of them tortured by the devil himself, and this is breaking them. That's really fucking frightening. Um, we, we cut back to a bar where Mary is, uh, has met up with Cass, and they're talking about how they can't find Sam and Dean and they're worried sick. Um, Mary does apologize to Cass for the way she treated him before, which was the right thing to do. I mean, Mary is a good person. Mary is an honorable person. And, and that kind of apology, a lot of people wouldn't have given, but she did. And I, and I think that that was, that shows the kind of person she is. And, she she brings up how long the guys have been gone and Cass has it down to the second. They've been gone six weeks, two days, and ten hours at the time that she's been, since, since they've been talking in this bar. And I'm sorry, that's just thinking of that just makes me want to cry. Um, Cass talks about how he had heard about... Um, some vampire, some um, some murders in Missouri, and he knew that they were vampires from the sound of things, and how that was the kind of a case that Sam and Dean would, you know, investigate that something like that, that they, you know, go into town, kill the monster, and head on out like they do because that's who Sam and Dean are. And Cass tried to work the case himself. He, but he feels like he didn't know what he did wrong. He's, you know, he said that he asked questions but it didn't work and he never found the vampire and while he was there three more women died before he left the town he says before I ran away and that just broke my heart that just completely broke my heart um, this is an angel that admits that he couldn't get something done and when Mary offers the idea that they work together he tells her that he would the only thing he'd do is get in her way and I'm like you're an angel you know sir really you're an angel dude you know don't talk about yourself like that um back at the prison uh, Sam and Dean are being given their meals and the the guard, you know, puts the, the tray on the little slide thing, but Dean doesn't reach, I'm sorry, Sam doesn't reach out to get it. 
the guard like peeks down through the thing for, through, through the window um Dean's I'm sorry Sam's lying on his cot and he's not moving um the the guard calls for help and the warden tells him to open the other cell they open the other cell and Dean's on the floor they check neither of the Winchesters have a pulse they're both dead we and I I'm like you know I'm sitting there going oh my god oh my god calm down calm down calm down i'm like okay you know i'm like breathe 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 seriously it is a really good thing between this show and sherlock it is a really good thing i don't drink um we cut back to the the prison morgue and sam's body is on one slab and dean's body is on another slab and i'm just sitting there like i'm gonna throw up all over the carpet um agent sanchez makes some pretty shitty remarks about how he wishes that they had you know that he had had a chance that to kill them he's basically like he wished that he had been able to to watch dean die in front of him i'm like motherfucker you are you are on my last fucking nerve and i am about to go full wolverine on your ass um um we cut back to castiel who gets a me- who hears a message from uh from mary and we and then we're back at the morgue, and all of a sudden, both Sam and Dean come back to life. Um, and they take the attendant who comes in to check on, you know, to do their autopsy prisoner, and they they find out that the even the um, the morgue worker doesn't know where they are. Um, that they. This guy is even blindfolded when he comes to work. He doesn't know where they're located and tells them that this is a facility that isn't supposed to exist. What? The government's involved in a cover-up? How could that be? Roswell! Um, I know I sound like a conspiracy person. I know. I'm sorry. But you can't convince me there aren't aliens in a you know warehouse somewhere. Anyway, um, Sam and Dean manage to get out of the building and use the the, coron- the coroner's phone to call uh, Castiel. Now, up till this point, we also know, we can tell from Sam and Dean's attitudes and their actions, something else happened. They, you know, so obviously, they, you know, they faked their death somehow, and we're not entirely sure how. But I'm getting a very bad feeling about how this might have happened. Um... And they, obviously, they, it doesn't take very long for them to find out, the people that run this prison, to find out that the Winchesters have escaped. Um, when they, when uh, Dean calls Cass, uh, Cass explains what, you know, Cass is trying to find out what happened. Sam finds a truck and a map, and the map says that they, where they are located is in a, a park in Colorado called Rocky Mountain National Park. And they figure out a plan and a way to meet up with Cass on the side of a road. And now Sam and Dean are found missing and Agent Sanchez is completely pissed off and goes out into the woods with troops, the troops whom he's ordering to shoot to kill. Um, uh, Mary gets a call from Cass about Sam and Dean and um, we see Cass meeting up with Mary while Sam and Dean have escaped into the forest. Cass, as I said, meets up with Mary, and Cass is of the opinion that they might need some backup, talking about, you know, maybe getting some backup from from Crowley and Rowena, which Mary is really not happy about that idea at all. Um, while they're in the woods, um, I'm sorry, uh, the we see Sam and Dean running through the woods, and uh, Sam... As they're running, Sam brings up something that they need to talk about, and Dean says they will talk about it later. Uh, we see Mary and uh, Cass pull up in a car, you know, pull up in the car Mary's driving. They pull up to the side of the road, and they are met by the people that Cass has called for backup, the British men of letters. And the, specifically Mick and Mr. Ketch. Mary is less than happy with this idea. 
And it turns out that this is a prison that Mr. Ketch actually knows about. That they are, um, that they're located at a place called Site 94. Um, and Mick tells Cass and Mary that he will have the, the, the tech group, the tech unit from the Men of Letters get a satellite over that area to try and track down Sam and Dean using, you know, heat sensors, that kind of a deal. Um, the soldiers are still hunting Sam and Dean. It's getting close to getting dark out. And, um, unfortunately, they've also picked up the, um, the Winchester's trail. Uh, Sam and Dean come across a soldier by himself. Uh, Sam puts him in a sleeper hold and knock him out and gets his gun. Dean picks up the walkie talkie and has a little, uh, tenet, you know, little, little back and forth with, uh, Agent Sanchez and, uh, tells him while they're talking, um, that you, because we're not out here trapped with you. You're trapped out here with us. Which I really liked that line. Um, is it wrong that that line turned me on? Because it really turned me on, like, a lot. Um, the, the reason I liked it so much was because it was, it reminded me a lot, it's kind of paraphrased, uh, from a line from Watchmen, which is a woefully underrated movie. I really enjoyed the fuck out of that. And it also had Jeffrey Dean Morgan in it. Um, there's a scene where a vigilante named Rorschach, who is kind of like Batman minus the moral code, is he's been captured and he's locked up in jail, in prison. And after a fight when he's being dragged out away from the other prisoners by the guards, he says, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. And... It was really good the way Jackie Earl Haley said it in the movie as Rorschach. It was even better the way Jensen said it as Dean. I'm sorry. I'm biased. So what? Um, Sam and Dean find an abandoned cabin and take refuge there and also start setting up, you know, traps around the perimeter. Uh, Dean finds a bear trap and sets it up outside, you know, covers it over with leaves and stuff like that. Um, and they also find a first aid kit and this kind of look passes between them that you can tell they really don't want to hurt the soldiers involved with tracking them down because they both feel like they're, you know, there's the soldiers are just doing their job. Um, the, the soldiers find the cabin along with agent Sanchez and the, and the, the warden camp and there is a firefight and they man and you know the Winchesters being the Winchesters uh managed to overcome everybody. Uh Dean uh, in in the in the cabin, Sam gets in a fight with one of the soldiers, knocks him to the ground, and tells him you'll live and puts the first aid kit on his chest, which I was like, that's actually pretty cool and more humane than most people would be. Um Agent Sanchez thankfully gets caught in the bear trap. I was like, yes! There is justice and karma in the world. Um, as they're leaving, the the warden pulls the, a gun on Dean, but Sam comes up behind the warden and holds the gun to his head. And when they're leaving, um, Sam, I'm sorry, Dean tells Agent Sanchez to you know back off and don't come after them again because the same thing will happen again. And Sam tells them the truth about what happened that they saved the president because the president was possessed by the devil. And as they're leaving, Warden Camp asks them who they are, and Sam says, we're the guys that saved the world. Fuck yeah. Um, Sam and Dean are running through the woods and get reunited with Mary and Cass and their hugs all around. And they're, they're surprised and also less than happy to find uh, Mr. Ketch and Mick helping out Cass and Mary. Um, when uh, the, Brit- the, 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 the British men of letters find out that the, the brothers left soldiers alive back at the, you know, back at the cabin and stuff like that, um, it's, Mr. Ketch isn't happy about it, but Sam and Dean's attitude is they were just soldiers doing, you know, doing their job and they weren't going to kill them for that. Um, the, the men of letters leave and Dean and Sam get in the car with Cass and Mary. Mary's driving and Sam and Sam sitting in the front seat. 
Dean and Cass are sitting in the back seat. Um, and Dean and Sam find out Mary is hunting because she went out and took care of those, that vampire that Cass couldn't get earlier on in the episode. Um, all of a sudden the car dies by the, the, the lights all go off. The radio goes off. The car just, you know, dies. And Sam says it's time. And all of a sudden they're joined by somebody else. They're joined by Billy the Reaper. And Dean tells Mary that they were trapped. You know, they, that, you know, he tells his mom, you know, I've been in hell. I, I've been to hell. This was worse. And he and Sam made a deal in blood with Billy. They made a pact to fake their, you know, to be dead long enough to get out of, you know, to die, to come back to life, and long enough to get out of the prison. And at midnight, Billy can take one of them for good. Um, and Billy's of the opinion that she doesn't really care which one of them goes, but that a Winchester is going to die tonight. And, you know, they had to die at midnight. And to break that deal, when Cass says they can't break it, Billy tells him they have to because if breaking it would cause cosmic consequences, according to her. Um, Billy asks them which one's going to go, and Mary says it's going to be her, which Billy's like, fine, she doesn't care as long as a Winchester dies. And when Sam and Dean protest this, Billy raises a hand and the guys are both thrown to the ground. Mary puts her gun to her head, and right before she shoots herself, all of a sudden, there's an angel blade shoved straight through Billy's chest, and she falls to the ground dead, and there's Cass having killed Billy. Dean asks Cass what he's done, and Cass, in a voice that sounds so broken, says, what had to be done? You know this world, this sad, doomed little world? It needs you. It needs every last Winchester it can get, and I won't let you die. I won't let any of you die, and I won't let you sacrifice yourselves. You mean too much to me, to everything. Yeah, you made a deal, a stupid deal, and I broke it. You're welcome. Wow. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. <coughs> we cut back to... um the motel room Mick is staying in where he is finishing up his report to his superiors and the report uh, reveals something that I had a feeling was going to happen and that is that Mr. Ketch went back to the prison and killed everybody. He killed Agent Sanchez which felt really good. Uh, he ki he killed the warden camp. He killed the the morgue attendant. He killed everybody at Site 94 that knew anything about Sam and Dean. And since everybody that was aware of what happened is now dead, and the the only other person would be the president who doesn't remember, it's like what happened to Sam and Dean never existed. They're off the radar again. He, also, he ends his report saying that he has made some inroads with the, the American hunters. And we see him giving the same speech he gave to Wally earlier on in the episode to someone else. And the camera turns, and it turns out the someone else is Mary. And she says she's listening. And the episode ends. Wow, what a way to come back. Um, I give First Blood four and a half bouquets out of five. I thought it was a terrific episode. I would like to say that I'm sorry that Billy had to die, um, or whatever it is that Reapers do. Um, I, I do feel bad about that because I really, really, really... Um, enjoy the actress that played Billy, uh, Lisa Berry. She is just absolutely fantastic. And um, she's been a great, you know, addition to the Supernatural universe. But 
I have to be honest, damn it, it felt good to see her die because she was threatening the Winchesters. And anybody who threatens the Winchesters, I'm sorry, that just kind of unleashes my spirit animal. And my spirit animal, I'll talk about my spirit animal later. Um, I was not, however, unhappy to see the death of uh, Agent Rick Sanchez, uh, played by Stephen Lobo. Um, I'm sure Stephen is a lovely person. I'm sure Stephen is a very kind individual and good to small animals and kind to his mother and on and on and on. My only regret about Agent Sanchez being dead is that we didn't get to see it happen because that would have made me very happy. I'm sorry. There it is. Uh, Next week's episode, which we did not get a preview of because uh, they were hyping the hell out of the premiere of Riverdale. Hmm. Um, episode 10 next week, Lily Sunder has some regrets. Um, we know that this is going to be a very Castiel heavy episode, which suits me just fine. I think Cass is a great character. And, um, we know that this person, Lily Sunder, is someone who has an axe to grind against angels and specifically against Cass. So will Sam and Dean be able to save their angel buddy? We'll have to find out. Okay, before I go, um, I'd like to talk about some things that have been going on online that have kind of gotten under my skin. Um, First off, let's talk about spirit animals. Now, I know not everybody believes in spirit animals, but when you look at yourself in your mind's eye, sometimes... I think what you see represents the way you are. And that can be, you can view that as your spirit animal, your Patronus, or your whatever you want. Um, Because I believe humans and animals are very tied in. I mean, we do share the planet together. We are all in this together. And I feel like my spirit animal is a bear. Um, Simply because I think I'm kind of like a bear in a lot of aspects. You know, I can be kind of quiet and kind of just sit back and wait kind of a thing. And then someone will piss me off and I'll charge and you won't want to see what happens next. That's kind of who I am, you know. Um, And that's why we have in our house the saying, don't poke the bear. Because when the bear gets poked, bad shit happens. Um, There has been a lot of really stupid shit going on in the supernatural community lately, and that's what bothers me. For the most part, most of the supernatural fans that I've met, that I've been in contact with, are some of the most giving, caring, compassionate, funny, generous, talented people I've ever met. And then there are the people that make me ashamed to be a supernatural fan. These are people who are like, well, because we think something, because we write about something, whatever that something is, it has to be canon. And if it's not canon, you all suck. To which my response is, unless you start getting a paycheck from Supernatural as a writer, something's not canon. And you can write about something as long and as hard and as much as you want. And if you enjoy writing about it, keep writing about it. And if you enjoy, like, showing it to other people and have other people read your stuff and that makes you happy, great. It still isn't canon. Stop trying to force it to be canon just because you want it to be canon. And if other people say that's not canon, take the grown-up attitude No, it's not, but I like writing about it. It's fun. Don't start acting like an immature little bitch. And you know who you are, and you know what I'm talking about. The other issue I have is with people... Now, this this goes out to everybody. This is not just Supernatural fans. This is everybody. And I really shouldn't have to bring this up. Excuse me. And it annoys me that I do. Because if you're smart enough to have an online account and post things to the internet, you need to realize that what you say 
is out there forever. Somewhere it's out there. And when you put something out there, it's for everybody to see. Unless you're in a private you know, group or something like that. Or it's a private email or whatever like that. Fine, that's different. But if you make a web page or if you put it on Twitter or if you put it in a news group, it's out there for everybody to see. And if somebody calls you on it, you have no motherfucking right to turn around and say, why is this your business? Because guess what? The second you put it out there for everybody to read, you made it their business. And if you wrote something about somebody that was rude or vicious or racist or uncalled for or or let's get into the supernatural community or you have these crazy people that refer to Jared and Jensen's wives as beards and then other people call you on that rude, disrespectful, hateful behavior and you turn around and say, why is that your business? You made it my business because you posted that rude shit for everybody to read. And somebody calling you on it isn't being like, oh, well, it's my opinion. Yes, it's your opinion. And you have the right to put up your opinion. And I have the right to turn around and say, I think your opinion is wrong. Or I think that post was very rude. Case closed. Nuff said, in other words, don't poke the fucking bear. Whew. I feel better now. Um, I would also like to talk about the other shows that I'm involved with on the net, which I hope you guys will go and take a listen to because they're fun. Um, I, I feel really bad getting that militant. I don't like being like that. I am usually about having fun and rainbow glitter and tons of parties and just enjoying life and finding stupid stuff to talk about and carrying around a rubber duck in my purse. And that's just who I am. Um, Subject Cinema is our movie podcast that I do with my dear, sweet, long-suffering husband, TC. Um, we look at movies, we have movie reviews, we talk about movie news, and we have lots and lots of fun. We've been doing this for over 10 years, and I hope you come and check it out on SubjectCinema.com. Uh, we have other shows that are part of our family as well. There is our list show, which is Front Row 5 and 10, uh, where we will look at two groups of five or one group of ten. And we have lists about, you know, songs and movies and books and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Um, this this week coming up is going to be our each of us doing a top ten of our favorite episodes of Animaniacs, one of the best shows of the 90s, and hopefully you'll come and check that out. Um, there is also going to be a new show coming up this week that, uh, TC is doing by himself. His, uh, mo- his, his show is a, a, a show about movie disasters, you know, disaster movies and all kinds of fun stuff like that. It's, it's, it's called Catastrophe. It's, it's a catastrophe show. So hopefully you'll come and check that out. You can look it up on our webpage at subjectcinema.com. You can find links to all of our stuff there, including Cave Babble, which is another show done by some great friends of ours, the Lion family, Eric and Valerie Lyon and their kids and grandkids. It's a great show and they're super fun people. And I hope you'll check them out too. Um, if you would like to check out um, my fan fiction, you can go over to fanfiction.net, type in Platinum Rose Lady. You can also follow me on Twitter at Platinum Rose at twitter.com and uh, follow me over there if you are so inclined. I hope everybody has a great week out there. I hope you stay safe and have a great week. And this is Platinum Rose Lady signing off for another week, reminding you to love the ones you hug, hug the ones you love. And take some time to stop and smell the roses. Go Patriots! Podcasting's choice. From coast to coast, continent to continent. Right here, 24-7. The